The ticking sound of the clock gets louder, beating synchronously with a young man's heart. A girl calls out to him in a soft voice. She looks at him mischievously and tells him to keep this a secret. Before she could do anything more, the boy Riku wakes up abruptly in a frenzy. Immersed in the dream he just had, Riku stands up in class and loudly yells for the girl Minis to stop. The entire class silently look back at him, wondering what's going on. Riku realizes the embarrassing situation he's put himself in as whispers of gossip fill the classroom. The students remark that Riku and his friend Minasi seem close and should probably go out with each other. The frustrated teacher scolds Riku for disrupting his class and tells him that he won't graduate if he keeps this up. Still at a loss for words, Riku hears someone softly laughing next to him. He looks over and it's the girl he was dreaming about, Minas. She laughs and teases Riku for dreaming about her in class. Riku is left speechless with embarrassment. After class, Minase and Riku are walking home, but Minis keeps teasing him and asking what his dream was about. Riku reluctantly answers that he had a scary dream, which is why he yelled so loudly. Curiously, Minas asks for more details. Although hesitant at first, Riku wants to let Minis know how he feels. He explains that in his dream, she was trying to get closer to him. Minas is shocked at his answer, but smiles cheekily. She walks closer to him and whispers that his dream might actually come true. Before Riku can respond, someone grabs both of their shoulders from behind. Takt is shaking with disappointment and sadness as he clings onto Riku and Minas. He complains about being the only one in a different class from his childhood friends. Riku and Minas wonder what to do as Minas cheerfully remarks that Take shouldn't worry about anything because, as his girlfriend, she is going to cheer him up. Riku remembers the disappointing reality. Minas and Takt are both his childhood friends and have been dating each other for a year now. Minas comforts a crying Takt as Riku watches on longingly. Minasi decides that she is going to let Tak cheer up by treating her to some cake. The couple invite Riku along to a cafe, but feeling awkward, he declines their offer and tells them to enjoy themselves before quickly walking off. Minas waves him goodbye as he glances over his shoulder before leaving. At home, Riku lays down and ponders about his dream. Thinking about why he is having such crazy thoughts, Riku is distracted by a tapping sound on his door. He gets up to check it out and finds a rain so Soaked Mine standing at his door. She asks him to let her stay with teary eyes. Unable to refuse, Riku lets Mine's in. He tells her to wait a bit and let him clean his room. Minas looks around and reminisces about Riku's house. As Riku finishes, he invites Mine's in his room and asks where her parents are. The two sit silently in his room for a bit. Riku wonders how to break the awkward silence as Mine starts shivering. He realizes that she must be cold and is about to leave to turn on the heating, but she stops him. A bit confused and flustered, Riku doesn't understand what's happening as Minase moves to sit closer to him and grabs his hand. Embarrassed, Riku tells Minase to move away because they are just friends, but Minase obliviously replies that this is normal between friends. Minase lays in Riku's lap and starts telling him what's on her mind. She tells him that something happened between her and Tak today and asks Riku to let her stay over. Riku reluctantly agrees and says that just for one night, she can stay Stay over. The situation escalates when all of a sudden, everything that happened in Riku's dream comes true. Suddenly, someone starts knocking at the door. Riku realizes that it's tact and panics, telling Minas to hide. He looks over at Mina smiling mischievously, and she confesses that the whole thing was just a prank by her. As Minas and Tak walk away, Minas texts Riku that she forgot her umbrella at his house and will come over again to pick it up. Riku worriedly wonders if he will be able to spend his last year of high school peacefully. Minas Minas looks up at Riku and invites him to come closer. He yells for her to stop, but suddenly finds himself standing up and making a scene in class again. The entire class laughs and gossips about Riku as he gets scolded by his teacher for sleeping in class. He looks over his shoulder and finds Mine smiling at him. As classes come to an end, Riku silently gets up and leaves the class without saying a word. Mine calls out to him, but to no avail. Riku sits by himself on a nearby bench and wonders what to do. He thinks about how he he has been avoiding Minas for a week since her prank, but it's not because he hates her. Every time he looks over at Minas, his mind starts to wander, and he begins imagining her in suggestive poses. He doesn't know what to do about it, so he just avoids Minas so he doesn't say or do anything stupid. Riku wonders when he started looking at his best friend's girlfriend that way.
He tells himself that eventually his weird feelings will settle down and decides to continue avoiding Minas. Some time goes by and evening comes. Minas finds Riku sitting by himself on the bench and confronts him. She asks him if he's just passing the time until sunset so he could avoid her. She pouts grumpily and Riku tries to run for it, but Minas grabs him. Riku begs her to let him go, but she refuses. She asks him why he's running away from her, and he replies that it's because she might do something weird again. Innes assures him that she won't do anything weird and asks him for her umbrella. She reminds him that she had left it at his house and wants it back. Riku tells her that if that's all, she could have just asked him for it directly instead of ambushing him. But Minas explains that Riku didn't listen to her and ran away before she could say anything. Riku gives in and the two of them walk back together to Riku's house. Minasi continues to hold onto Riku's arm. So he doesn't run away. Riku explains that he won't run away, but he doesn't want Tak to misunderstand the situation. Minasuke coldly replies that even if Tak seems them like this, it doesn't matter. If by her nonchalant behavior, Riku struggles to understand what she's thinking. They arrive at his house and Riku tells her to wait outside while he fetches her umbrella. He goes inside and starts looking for her umbrella as she walks in behind him and locks the door. Riku starts to get nervous seeing her at his house again after what happened last week. Minas teases him that he let her in even after what happened last week, and Riku is surprised that she isn't pretending it never happened. She explains that she wouldn't do that and asks him why he's been avoiding her. Riku says that he hasn't been avoiding her, and Minas calls him a liar. She asks him if he wants to continue from where they left off that day, and Riku confesses that he would like that. Minas gets up and says that she's only her to get her umbrella today, and she must leave. Riku gets up after her and offers to walk her home. Riku mentions that Minase shouldn't say flirtatious stuff to anyone jokingly or they might misunderstand. She explains that she has never said anything like that to anyone but Riku. Minase teases Rika and says that that's what he thinks about her. Riku apologizes for being insensitive and Minase explains that she'll forgive him if he lets her stay over at his house next time. Minase peers through the trees and spots what she was looking for, their secret base. She immediately alerts her companions, Riku and Takt, that she found it. Tak jumps with excitement and decides to race the others to the base. Minas follows behind him, dragging her feet. Riku looks over at his friends and wonders how he found himself stuck in the middle of such contrasting personalities. He thinks about earlier when Riku and Tak are sitting together in class and Riku suggests that they go out that evening. Tak is reluctant to have a sleepover because of his club activities until Riku explains that this was actually Minasi's idea. Tak's eyes glow up at the mention of Minaste's as Riku exploits his weakness. With little consideration, Takt agrees to hang out explaining that he can't reject an idea proposed by his cute girlfriend. Confirming the plan, Takt asks Riku whose house they all need to show up. Riku explains that Takt should show up at his house and weirdly asks him to keep this a secret from Minase. Takt asks why to which Riku replies that he wants to surprise Minase. Tak smiles excitedly and agrees with Riku's plans. The boys revel in excitement as they wait for the surprise. Later, Minase shows up at Riku's house and stands speechless in confusion upon seeing an energetic Tak standing before her with his usual smile. Regaining her composure, Minase asks what's going on and Riku looks away, too scared to answer her and incur her wrath. Tak seems more than happy to do it, though, as he volunteers to explain everything to Minase. Knowing the answers did not soothe her her mind. In fact, it had the complete opposite effect as she angrily approaches Riku and asks him why Takt is there and Riku cautiously replies that while he did agree to let her stay over, he never said that he wouldn't invite anyone else over too. Still annoyed, Minas decides to let the matter go for now as she walks away swiftly. Riku is surprised that she let it go so quickly and sighs in relief when Minas turns around wearing a wide grin on her face and states that they can still do plenty of things together even if they aren't alone. Tekt is completely oblivious to the entire situation and blissfully asks them what the two of them have planned to cheer him up. Realizing that that's what Riku told Tak, Minas decides to go with it and apologizes to Takt. 
explaining that she didn't think of doing anything in particular. She says that they should focus on what Takt wants to do instead, which puts Takt in contemplation. Takt ponders about the matter and states that if it was up to him, he would want to go to their childhood secret base together. The three friends stumble inside the base as warm memories fill their minds. They express that the place seems like it hasn't changed, but they have. Climbing up to the shelf, Mina starts searching around for something interesting. After messing around at the base for a bit, Riku suggests that maybe they should start playing tag too like they used to. Takt refuses the idea, stating that they are adults now and must play like adults. Later a lone Riku walks through the area searching for his friends because Tak decided to play hide and seek instead. Hearing rustling sounds from nearby bushes, Riku immediately finds Tak as he whines about losing but Riku explains that he has years of experience looking for Tak hiding around this place. Riku states that Tak is bad at sitting patiently waiting. Tak agrees, explaining that he was always bad at hide and seek and felt jealous of Minase and Riku were so good at it. With his guilt weighing him down, Riku is confused about how to respond. He tries to brush it off, saying that it was a long time ago, but Tak knows that something's up. He goes up to Riku and asks what Riku is hiding. A cold silence fills the air as Riku struggles to answer Tak's question. Without warning, Tak reaches into Riku's pocket, explaining that this is what Riku's hiding. Riku worries about Tak going through his phone, but he pulls out something completely different. He pulls out Riku's protein bars, menacingly and munches without hesitation. Takt explains that he was just hungry and Riku sighs in relief. Tak smiles and exclaims that he knew Riku would bring something to eat for him, but Riku explains that it wasn't for him, but that's just how it turned out in the end. Tak jokes around and teases Riku, explaining that since he is the one eating it now, it may as well have been for him. Tak continues and states that he believes Riku must have brought all kinds of different things and supplies for him. Riku takes the joke very seriously and starts listening all kinds of random things that he also brought for Tak. Tak quickly finishes the snack and gets up to leave. Before Riku could follow, Tak explains that they're going separate ways now. He states that it would be more fun for them both to separately search for Mainase to see who finds her first. Riku agrees and Tak leaves, claiming that he isn't going to lose this time. Riku knows exactly where Mainase goes to hide whenever he can't find her and begins to search in that area. Before he has a chance to thoroughly investigate, something grabs grabs onto him from the bushes and pulls him down with great force. Minase is the one who pulled him down and cheerfully exclaims that she found Riku. Riku jokes that that's supposed to be his line, but Minas explains that she knew where Riku would look for her, which is why she went to hide there. Feeling embarrassed and ashamed, Riku reminds himself that Minase is Tak's girlfriend and states that he came to check this spot by coincidence. And how could Minas ignore the possibility that both Riku and Tak showed up together to find her butt. Minase denies the claim, explaining that Takt would always turn something like this into a competition and the two of them would have never come together. A hint of sadness envelops Minase's eyes as she states that Takt would have never been able to find her anyway. Riku denies her claim and Minase says that they should just wait there and see if Takt finds them. These the two of them sit patiently, resting against a tree stump and waiting for Tak. Riku begins to feel awkward and regrets going along with Minase's ideas. Hearing Minas squirming around, Riku asks her what happened and she explains that she got bit by a bug. Riku explains that he has medicine for bug bites and offers it to her. Minase decides to tease Riku and asks him to apply the medicine. He reluctantly agrees and applies the medicine whilst feeling remarkably awkward. Eventually, Minase decides to stop teasing Riku and explains that seeing his embarrassed face was enough fun for now. She feels something on her neck and reaches her hand over to investigate. Riku tries to ask her something, but before he has a chance to finish, Minaz looks over at her hand to see what was on her neck. Realizing that it was a bug, Minaz completely freaks out and starts to cling to Riku in fear. Riku tries to calm her down, but it's no use. Minase is completely panic-stricken. Minaz grabs Riku and freaks out even more because of the bug crawling on her. Minaz and Riku have gotten themselves into an even more 
awkward situation, but it keeps getting worse. The voice of Tuck calling out for Minise starts coming from nearby and Riku wonders if he noticed them. Wanting to prevent any misunderstandings, Riku tells Minase that she should move away before Tuck sees them. But Minasi is still scared of the bug and refuses to move away. Trying to solve the problem, Riku asks Minasi where the bug is and she explains that it is on her back. Although slightly hesitant, Riku tries to calm Minis down and explains that he will remove the bug. Riku tells Minasis to stay still as he tries to catch the bug and get is off of her. Minas states that she will try her best. Riku asks why she is so repulsed by insects now when she used to catch them with her hands when they were young. Minas explains that that was back when she was still in elementary school, and now she's older and can't stand those bugs. Curious, Riku asks her why she hid in this place when she knew that there will be bugs around here. Embarrassed, Minas looks away and states that she forgot about the bugs in her excitement. Riku can't help but laugh at Minas's idiocy. The two of them fool around as Tak hopelessly looks around for them with no success. Finally, Riku manages to take the bug out and Minas calms down. Now that the bug situation is resolved, Riku asks Minas to get off of him but Minas hesitantly declines, stating that if they move now, Takt might find them because of the noise. He defeated, Riku can do nothing but wait in place until Tak does to look elsewhere. Realizing the situation that he's in, Riku can't help but get a little excited and his heart starts beating faster. Minas tells him that his heart is beating too loudly and Takt might end up finding them because of him. He sees another opportunity and immediately takes it. She wastes no time and starts teasing Riku asking what could be the reason for his fast heartbeat. Riku tries to brush it off, explaining that anyone would begin to get excited in a situation like this. Minas is satisfied with his answer, but Riku discourages her from getting the wrong idea, stating that she shouldn't be happy about that. Minas can't help it, though, and explains that Riku always treats her coldly for some reason, so interactions like this make her happy. Riku says that he acts distant towards her because she has talked. Before the two can resolve their feelings, they get into interrupted by a frustrated Takt looking around for Minaes. He vents out his frustration, claiming that Minaes has been distant towards him since that day. Riku wonders what he could mean. Eventually, Tak leaves to search somewhere else. Minas asks if he left and Riku says that he's probably gone. Minas finally gets off of Riku and apologizes to him. Riku is shocked by her sudden apology and asks what she's sorry about. He immediately gets his answer as Minasi moves closer and kiss him. She runs away immediately and Riku yells in shock. Takt hears him and comes over to ask what's going on. Riku, still flustered by what just happened, replies that some water fell on his neck all of a sudden which startled him and he ended up screaming. Relieved, Takt gets annoyed with Riku for making him worry for nothing. After running for a bit, Minas takes rest next to a tree and tries to gather her thoughts. She struggles to relax her pounding heart as she ponders about what just happened. This condines as his thoughts drive her crazy and she struggles to calm down. Frustrated with the bittersweet turn of events, she begins to cry and states that if she was going to do this anyway, she should have done so sooner. Riku and Takt wash up together in the bath. Feeling a bit uncomfortable, Riku states that this bath is a little too cramped for the both of them, but Takt explains that it can't be helped because they both got soaked. Riku comments about the absurdity of the situation, saying that it's hard to believe that they both managed to trip and fall into the river. Takt disappointedly exclaims that apparently they aren't so young and robust anymore, and Riku wonders how it took him this long to realize that. Takt passes an off-handed comment, stating that it was Riku's fault that he fell because Riku pulled him down with him. Riku fights back, saying that Takt was the one who pushed him and destroyed his balance in the first place. Argument turns into a brawl and Takt suggests that they resolve this disagreement with a match. He explains the rules stating that whoever can hold their breath the longest under hot water will win. Riku agrees and the two hopeless idiots begin to submerge their heads under the water and hold their breath. Confident that he's won, Riku pulls pulls his head out of the water and exclaims that he is the winner. Tak doesn't accept that outcome and the two begin brawling again. Walking by, Minas 
boss notices the ruckus from the bathroom and decides to go in and inform the boys that dinner is ready. She opens the door to an awkward surprise and feeling at a loss for words. She asks them if she should wait another 30 minutes for them to finish. They both exclaim that they are done and everyone gathers to enjoy their dinner. Riku anxiously waits for the food, stating that he hasn't had Minase's food in a long time. Minaz reminisces that she learned cooking from Riku's mother and the three friends revel in their nostalgia for a bit. Minas serves the dinner and everyone enjoys the lovely meal. Tok tries to tease Riku, saying that his portion is tastier because it is filled with love. Riku denies his claim, saying that all the portions taste the same, but Tok insists. Riku tries the food and says that it is indeed different. Surprised, Tok explains that he was just joking about the different taste, but Mine states that the taste is going to be different because she added some extra seasoning in one of the servings. Tok is determined to identify the difference between the plates, but is never able to. Later that night, the boys have fallen asleep when Riku wakes up. He comes outside the room and notices Mine sitting there. Minas asks if Takt is going to come, but Riku explains that Takt is fast asleep. Surprised, Minas tells Riku that she took his shirt. Riku explains that it is surprising that he knew where it was, but Minas explains that that's where he always keeps his cloth since childhood. Minas states that she will wash and warm up the shirt later, but Riku doesn't look so convinced. The two of them sit down in silence for a bit. Eventually, they realize what they want to say. Riku asks Minas about their recent kiss. Minas asks Riku if her prank surprised him, to which he said yes. Satisfied, Minas explains that her prank was successful. Minas holds Riku's hand and asks if they should do it again. Riku gets flustered and yells for Minas to stop explaining that he doesn't want things to change between them. Minas explains that things have already changed between then and wonders what caused this situation. Eventually, Minase gets sleepy and decides to leave for bed, while Riku is left to wonder about the state of their relationship. Riku lays down in disappointment and confusion, stating that he doesn't understand Minase's intentions. Before he could ponder too deeply about his situation, he notices a girl sitting next to him looking down. A surprised Riku asks who the girl is in confusion. Clueless as ever, Riku asks about who the girl is. The girl suddenly starts trembling and states that she can't take it anymore because of her legs. Her legs have become numb and as she tries to get up, Riku tries to warn her to take it slow, otherwise her leg pain might get even worse. She doesn't listen to Riku and tries to get up quickly, injuring her legs in the process and falling down head first on top of Riku. Riku suddenly remembers who she is, thinking that he was in this exact situation because of a certain girl. Even back in middle school, Riku recognizes her immediately, asking if she was Umimi. Umimi pouts and complains that Riku was too slow to recognize her, still stuck beneath her. Riku explains that it's been too Two years since they've spoken, so of course it took him a while. Umimi rejects his explanation and states that the amount of time that has passed is not important. What's important is the fact that his kuhai came a long way to see him, so he should have recognized her immediately as a dutiful senpai. Riku gives up and agrees with her statements. Umimi proudly flaunts about the conversation and asks if there's anything he would like her to know. Riku completely roasts her, stating that she is pretty heavy and need to get off of him. Umimi can't believe that that's the first thing he says to her after two years. She screams loudly and chases Riku around. After the situation calms down a bit, Umimi makes some tea for the both of them to enjoy as they talk it out. Umimi apologizes for her abrupt behavior and Riku explains that it's okay, further asking her how long she's been there. Umimi explains that when she got to the house, she knocked at the front door but no one answered. She then walked over towards the side garden and spots Riku sleeping. Then she decided to surprise Riku, which is why she has been there for at least an hour and a half. Riku is a little surprised by this behavior and wonders why they didn't at least change her position. Riku asks Umimi what made her want to come to this town to hang out, and she explains that she didn't come to the town to hang out. She came back. She explains that just like junior high, her family's circumstances have caused her to suddenly move back to this town and stay with her grandma. 
Riku begins to understand her situation more and feels sorry for her. Umimi further elaborates that in the beginning, she wasn't so sure about coming back here, but then she saw that her senpai was here too, and she felt relieved. Riku exclaims that Yumimi has gotten even better at flattering than before. Riku recalls that she used to be a cute kuhai who looked up to him and admired him. That's how he would like to think about her, but she's completely changed. Before he can worry about the situation, Umimi calls out to him and says that she will be transferring schools tomorrow and will join him at his school. She expects that he will give her a proper school campus tour and promises that she will show up outside her class at lunchtime. The situation becomes completely awkward in class when an excited Umimi bursts through the doors and starts to cling to Riku. All the students begin to gossip about the situation while Riku tries to break free from the arm and escape this awkward situation. Riku scolds Umimi, saying that he told her to wait outside, but she didn't listen. Minisli looks over at the clingy girl and asks Riku what's going on. She immediately drags Riku away, stating that they don't have much time during break and have to see the entire campus. Minis watches them leave longingly as Umimi continues to grab onto Riku. Riku gives her a tour of the entire campus and finishes his tour at the school's vending machine. Umimi decides to buy him a drink for his hard work. Umimi asks about Minasaye and Riku explains that she probably knows her. Umimi remarks that she still remembers Minasenpei as well and states that she is still as beautiful as ever, but now even Umimi is beautiful. As she talks about Minas, coincidentally, she shows up along with Takt and they ask Riku about Umimi. Before he could answer, she drags him away forcefully. Umimi finally comes to stop and breaks down into tears, explaining that she is Tak's ex-girlfriend and she is going to get rejected again. Minis walks around with the bottle of tea that Umimi drops seeking to return it to Riku. She calls out to Riku as she searches through the hallways. Minas wonders who that girl was but decides that there are more pressing matters at hand. She decides that if she doesn't find Riku in the next two minutes, she is going to drink the tea. Unfortunately for her, as soon as she makes that deal with herself, she spots Riku. She walks over towards him to return the bottle, but she wasn't ready for what she saw. Riku and Umimi embracing each other. Minase is completely dejected by what she saw and walks away silently. She decides to give it back to him later and not interrupt him right now. Umimi holds onto Riku as she gets overwhelmed with emotions, explaining that Takt was her ex-boyfriend. He asks why. And when this happened and tries to explain while holding her tears back that it happened back in junior high, Riku can barely make out what she's saying because of her cries and tells her to calm down first. He hands her a handkerchief and comforts her. After getting comforted by him for a bit, Umimi decides to explain the situation. She explains that back in her second year of junior high, she was hanging out with Riku and all he would talk about was his best friend Tak. She teases him a bit stating that he might even be in love with him because of how fondly he speaks of him. Riku brushes it off stating that he cares about Tak but not in that way. Umimi smiles along but feels dejected because she has a secret crush on Riku that she can't confess. Umimi explains that because of this, she was very curious about Takt and began to hang out with him more and more. Then one day, trying to go about her business, Umimi tripped and fell in front of Takt in a grand manner, and he responded in the most unexpected way. He reached his hands down and explained that he liked her. Umimi is completed shocked by this sudden confession and explains that she has always heard a lot about him from Riku. That was when Takt asked her out and she agreed to date him for a couple of months. Eventually, Takt would confess that he had feelings for someone else and broke up with Umimi. During their relationship, Takt also asked Umimi not to tell Riku about their relationship. Umimi expressed her sadness after being dumped by Takt like that and Riku pats her head and reassures her, stating that she has become so cute now that he couldn't even recognize her. He tells her that she was already a good person and now she is even cute. She will definitely be able to find a good guy soon. Umimi takes the compliment and asks Riku if that includes him as well. Flustered, Riku replies that that's not what he meant and Umimi laughs and apologizes for teasing him. Umimi thanks Riku for making her feel better and comforting her. Later that day, Riku sits by himself lost in thought as the school bell rings. Since he has a lot on his mind, he decides to skip class and sort his feelings out. Before he could do anything, 
Minas comes and sits next to him, stating that if he's going to skip class, then so will Minas. Confused by the entire situation, Riku asks Minas why she's here and she explains that she came to return his tea. She asks if her being there bothers Riku but he explains that it doesn't. Minas tries to ask Riku about Umimi and what she thought she saw them doing, but she can't bring herself to say anything and decides to keep quiet about it. She starts to drink the tea and offers some to Riku. He accepts, but Minas is unable to hold back her feelings any longer. She goes in to kiss Riku. Riku tries to stop her, but they both get carried away in their feelings. Unbeknownst to them, someone was standing nearby and watching them with malicious intent, waiting for the right moment and taking pictures of them together. Umimi walks through the hallway when she realizes that she forgot to take Rika's handkerchief to wash. After pondering for a moment, she decides she should go back and take it from him. Umimi disappointedly looks around for Riku, feeling disappointed for being late for her first class. She remarks about the failure of her academic debut when she spots something. She sees Riku and Minas making out. Umimar's world shatters as she sees her beloved senpai being taken away by Minas. She can't believe what she has just seen or stop herself from crying. Feeling vengeful, and envious, Umimi pulls out her phone and clicks pictures of Riku and Minaz. Riku hears the clicking and looks over to see Umimi recording evidence of their intimacy. Riku calls out to Umimi, causing her to run away, and he quickly tries to follow behind her. Before Riku could go, Minaz grabs onto his arm to stop him. She asks him why he is going after her, and he explains that it's because he wants to give her an explanation. Minas asks him what explanation he wants to give her for kissing his best friend's girlfriend. She states that no matter what explanation he gives her, she will not understand. So he should just stay with her instead. Riku doesn't listen to her, pushing her away aggressively. Minas wonders if Riku didn't like the kiss, but he explains that that's not it. He just doesn't want his friendship with Takt and Minas to end in this way. He seems adamant that Umimi will understand his feelings and he chases after her. Sitting alone, Minas begins feeling disappointed in herself. She exclaims that she needs to try harder. Omimi calls Riku to talk after school. She greets him all bubbly and cheerfully like always and apologizes for calling him out here. Riku recalls that while he went running after Umimi, he was looking around trying to find her when he suddenly got a call from her calling to meet. He wonders if the person who saw them wasn't Omimi after all and feels relieved. Lost in his thoughts, he misses what Umimi is trying to tell him. She angrily demands his attention and asks if he's even listening. She explains that she's trying to talk about how to maintain a long-lasting friendship. As her senpai, who has far more experience in this regard, she wants to know how she can make new friends who would actually be there for her. Riku states that he is not expert in long-lasting friendships, but admits that his friendship with Takt and Minaz has been going strong for many years. Umimi carefully listens to his reply as she sips her drink. She asks him if Minasi is his friend, to which he replies that yes, she is. Disappointed in his response, Umimi tells him that he has changed. Riku asks what she means, and she explains that he now has friends that he kisses. Terrified that his worst fears actually came true, Riku asks Umimi what she's talking about. She mocks him for playing dumb and states that she saw him kissing Minas with her own eyes. Riku realizes that the person who saw them and ran away was Umimi after all. He wonders how to respond to this situation. Omimi states that she think the two of them share a deep friendship that goes beyond Senpai and Kuhai. Riku agrees and Omimi immediately jumps up, asking if that means he will kiss her too. She moves closer to him and tries to kiss him, but he stops her, putting his hand over her lips. Disappointed, Omimi states that apparently she was mistaken and they weren't close friends after all. She starts to cry again and bites Rika's hand, calling him a liar. He pulls his hand away, flinching in pain, and Umimi explains that she was just testing him to see if he would kiss anyone that offered. She clarifies that she wasn't actually trying to kiss him. She pulls out her phone on which she has a picture of Riku and Minae's kissing. She shows it to him and asks him to tell her everything that's going on between them from beginning to end. With his options limited, Riku decides to try and explain the situation to Omimi and tell her everything to regain her trust. 
He tells her everything that he could. Umimi seems confused about Manasseh's intentions. She wonders if Manasseh's just playing around with both boys just for fun. Umimi asks Riku what he wants to do with Minase. Does he want to stay friends or does he want to date her? Riku adamantly declares that he wants to stay friends with Minase. Umimi understands and asks him her final question. She asks him why he calls her by her second name Minase when he used to call her Shizuku before. Riku explains that he stopped calling her by her first name because she is Tak's girlfriend now and he doesn't want to be too frank with her and make Tak uncomfortable. Umimi questions the validity of his answer. She asks him if he's sure that's the reason and asks him to look her in the eyes while answering. She suspects that he started referring to Minis more formally to try and suppress his own emotions towards her. Riku tries to deny it, but he can't muster the courage to do so. Umimi tells him to just reply honestly without getting worried because she isn't going to blame him. As the heated conversation nears its end, Umimi asks Riku to do something for her. Minaz takes a bath to try to relax and thinks back to the situation that happened earlier. All of a sudden, her phone begins to vibrate and she checks it immediately. She received a text from Riku asking her for a little favor. Riku waits nervously to hear Umimi's demands for keeping quiet about the matter. To his surprise, Umimi's request is simple, maybe even too simple for the difficult situation surrounding it. She asks Riku to become a member of the sports festival executive committee and asks him to invite Take and Minase as well. Riku is completely confused at her strange request that seemingly came out of nowhere. A moment of silence follows as Riku struggles to understand what he just heard. He asks Umimi for the reason of such a strange request, and she explains that the reason is obvious. She wants to spend for time with Takt and wants to get closer to him. She explains that his relationship with Minase isn't going so well, so it's probably fine if she tries to get with him. Conveniently, if she gets together with Tak, that means Riku will have Minas all to himself. Feeling like she has solved the problem entirely with her genius plan, Umimi proudly exclaims that this is a great idea. Riku seems hesitant about the plan and tries to deny it, but Umimi is determined and even threatens Riku with the picture on her phone, saying that if he doesn't comply with her requests, then she might let something slip out. Riku gives up trying to resist and message Minase about the sports team executive committee. She calls him and asks if it's really okay for her to join. Riku asks why it wouldn't be okay. Minas explains that she saw him kissing his Kuhai Umimi earlier and Riku's shocked to hear that. He swears that he has never kissed her and Minase believes him. She agrees to join the sports festival executive committee, but on one condition. Half a month later, Riku is working hard placing sports equipment in the storage room. He eventually gets his work done and leaves to get some fresh air. He thinks that being a member of the sports festival executive committee is good, but the work required is so labor-intensive. Riku wonders why everyone is absent on the hardest days such as today, as Takta's club activities and Mine's is also busy with some work. Before he can ponder any longer, rain comes pouring down instantly and completely soaks him. He walks back into the storage room, now drenched. He decides to wait out the rain in that room since he doesn't have an umbrella. Some time goes by and Rain has no signs of stopping. Feeling cold after getting soaked, Riku decides to look for something to cover himself with to warm up. Just then he hears someone enter the storage room and he realizes that it's Minae's. She teases him until she scared the life out of him and then hands him an umbrella that she brought for him. Riku sighs in relief and asks her to not scare him like that. Nevertheless, he really needed the umbrella and is glad to see Minasi coming to save the day. Before the two of them are able to leave, Riku twists the door lock too hard and breaks it off, locking himself in with Minase. He asks her if she has a cell phone, but she replies that she left it in class. Riku starts freezing because of his wet cloths, and Minase feels kind of responsible for trapping them in here because he locked the door on her way in. Feeling bad for Riku, she decides to help him. Minas decides to wear her jacket and give her dry shirt to Riku, so he doesn't sit in wet cloths. He turns his back to her while he changes into her shirt, and Minase comments that his back has gotten bigger. Riku thinks back to their childhood and asks if Minas still remembers about the time when she injured her foot while playing on a mountain and couldn't move. Riku tried his best to give her piggyback ride, but in the end, he didn't manage to carry her. Takt ended up lifting her up on his back and carrying her home. 
Riku explains that he felt pathetic about himself back then for not being able to be there for Minace when she was hurt. This is why he started training every day in case such a situation arises again. Riku laughs at himself and states that probably no one even remembers that. Minace smiles warmly and states that she remembers that. She reaches for Riku and puts her arms around him like a piggyback ride. She tells him that he can carry her now, but Riku refuses, stating that she has gotten heavier since they were kids so carrying her might be difficult. Minasi's warm hug immediately turns into a chokehold as she punishes Riku for saying that she is too heavy to lift. The two bicker about it for a bit and Minas tells Riku to call her by her first name. Riku remembers that that was her condition for joining the sports festival executive committee. She had asked him to start calling her by her first name like he used to when they were younger. She adamantly reminds him that he has not fulfilled this condition yet. Riku tries to brush it off, stating that they need to wait a little more. Minas has had enough of waiting and demands that he do it right then and there. She insists that he call her by her first name now. Umimi keeps calling Riku, not knowing that he doesn't have her phone. She recalls that they were supposed to meet up and hang out today, but he is completely missing and not responding to text or calls. She worries about him and wonders if something happened to him, or maybe he got busy with something else. She continues to try to reach him through call, and eventually her call gets picked up. Relieved, she starts to ask Riku where he is. To her surprise, the person who picks up Riku's phone is not Riku, but Tok. Her eyes widen up with surprise as she recognizes the person she has accidentally called. Takt opens the classroom door, calling out for Riku. He wonders whether Riku already went home and how he hasn't been able to contact Riku for a while. He notices Riku's bag on the desk in front of him and concludes that Riku is still in the school. He reaches for Riku's mobile phone and tries to guess his password. Tak surprises himself when he successfully unlocks the mobile phone as he guesses the password to Riku's phone correctly, but immediately the phone starts to ring. The person on the other end of the line calls out for the owner of the phone, Riku. Tak exclaims how he shouldn't have picked up the phone but answers the call nonetheless. Inami on the other end of the call wonders why Takt has Riku's phone and Tak tells her that it will be too long to explain over to phone so they decide to meet up. After explaining, Inami recalls that it was just a coincidence that Takt answered Riku's phone while he was looking for him because the phone started to ring as soon as he entered the classroom. Inami looks at Takt with a weird expression on her face, trying to keep eye contact but fails, and suddenly looks away while thinking to herself how she's so nervous in front of Tak that she can't seem to speak. She must still have feelings for him if she is still getting this nervous to talk to him. She doesn't feel like this when she talks to Riku. Lost in her thoughts, she suddenly comes back to reality when she hears Tak call her name multiple times. She apologizes for not listening and that she was just thinking that Tak has become cute. She is surprised on her own little outburst. She questions Takt, asking him why he decided to go out with her in junior high. Immediately, she starts to dismiss the topic by saying there's no need to answer. She calms down and says that she wasn't exactly a looker back then, so she just wondered why he would go out with her, even though Minez was with him. Tak starts to think of an answer. He tells her that it was because he wanted to fall in love with someone else. Inami questions this and he tells her she was the same as him too, so she must understand, surprised. Inami starts to refuse, saying that it wasn't like that. The scene shifts to Minase and Riku, where Minas asks him to call her by her name. Riku remembers Inami's words, where she told him that he's only trying to suppress his feelings. Building up the courage, Riku calls her by her first name, Shizuku. Minas, in tears, asks him to say again because she couldn't hear him. He calls her by her first name. She tells him to call her by her name again and again. As Minai starts to tell Riku something, the door clicks open. Mina starts to tell Riku something when the door opens. They see a figure holding a flashlight, asking them what the two of them are doing. Both of them ask their teacher what he's doing in the room. The teacher looks at them and sees a shirtless Riku with Minas behind him wearing his shirt. The teacher tells him not to do indecent stuff at school, to which both of them exclaim that they weren't doing anything of the sort. When they meet up with Inami and Takt, Inami whines about being made to wait for so long and she scolds Riku for leaving his phone behind while Tak notices that Minez was wearing Riku's jumper. He asks Riku to tell him what happened. While trying to give a response, Riku sneezes hard. 
Biku lays in the bed while being sick with a cold. He talks out loud about how he only has half-day classes so it's fine if he gets sick on such a day. He thinks back to last night where Manez was about to say something to him along the lines of how she has always been feeling a certain way. He dreams about doing things with Manez the previous night. He finds it pleasuring and falls asleep as he thinks of this, maybe due to his fever that he was thinking of such crazy things. When he wakes up, he sees Tak's face right above him. Surprised and startled, he screams and gets up on his bed immediately. Tak apologizes for waking him up and gives him the snacks he bought for him because he heard Riku was sick. Tak tells Riku how he always gets sick easily. And even as children, Riku was always the one getting sick, most often as he puts a fever pad on his forehead. He asks whether he should put the jelly in the fridge or not. Riku tells him that he wants to eat soon, so he should just put it on the table outside as Riku falls back to sleep. When he wakes up, he feels some kind of weird sensation on his lips. In Riku's room, Inami sits by his bed as he sleeps and kisses him. When Riku starts awake, she runs to hide behind the wall. Riku, after waking up, questions the weird sensation on his lips while Inami panics. Three hours ago, Inami finds out that Riku is absent today from a boy in his class, who tells her that Riku caught some sort of a cold. She thanks the boy for telling her and starts to walk away when she gets tackled in an embrace from behind by her two friends. They ask whether she got to saw her beloved Ryu today to which she tells them that he is absent today and he is not her beloved senpai. The one she likes is Tak. The two girls burst into laughter, saying that they know who she has a crush on because she is always telling them. Angry at their teasing, Anami exclaims that there is nothing going on between her and Ishizuki because he is like her brother. He always listens to her selfishness and when she does something to anger him, he scolds her. That is like big brother behavior to which the other two agree with. One of the girls asks Inami that she wouldn't mind if she saw Senpei kissing some other girl. The bell rings and the girls run away. But Anam starts thinking about the question she was asked before. Inami holds a bag full of stuff on her way to Riku's house. She complains about how Riku is making her carry something so heavy. She enters his house and notices how no one is home. She goes to Riku's room and pops her head in to ask if he is awake. She sees him sleeping peacefully. She smiles and says that he completely ditched their plans yesterday. And now today, he is just sleeping without any care in the world as she pokes his cheeks. She calls him Onichan, which means older brother. She looks to the side and sees another bag, thinking Takt came by to drop it off or Minace. At the thought, she gets angry and thinks about the thing her friends said back then. She thinks about the kiss and leans over to kiss Riku's cheek as he sleeps. Inwardly, she feels conflicted asking herself whether she would understand something she kisses him. But she cannot. She doesn't want things to change between them both. If things change, then he might disappear from her life and she does not want that to happen. She lays down beside him on her side while looking at him and as he nuzzles into her, causing her to peck his cheek. She hears the front door open and close and Minace's voice is heard when she calls out for Riku asking if he is home. Minas enters Riku's house as she takes off her shoes while calling out if anyone is home. She notices a pair of school shoes by the entrance. Considering they are small, she wonders whether they are of a girl. She announces that she is coming in and struggles to carry her shopping bag with her, thinking it is too heavy and that she might have bought a little too much. While she is distracted, she bumps into Inami and they both fall down and their things scatter on the ground. Minas looks up and sees that it's Inami, Riku's kuhai. Inami quickly pulls herself together and apologizes for bumping into her, saying that she will pick up the stuff on the ground. Minas says there is no need and they they both reach for the same thing at the same time. They both look at each other and burst into laughter. Minas makes tea and pours it in cups. She gives one of the cups to Inami and says she is surprised that they both brought the same things over for Riku. Inami is mesmerized by Minas's beauty. Minas talks about how there are a lot of snacks so they can eat some of them right now. She says that Riku is picky with his food but Inami brought all of his favorites. She must know him pretty well. Inami replies with the fact that when she and Riku first met, she was crying and he took her to the club room and gave her the same snack. At that time, he said that she will feel better if she ate something sweet. After saying that, he remained silent until she had calmed down. Minas smiles as she agrees that Riku would do something like that. She asks her whether he served her piping hot tea as well and Inami remembers that he in fact did. 
and that he always had mandarins with hard peels. They laugh how there is a bit of old person living inside Riku. Inami reconsiders her impression of Mine's because at first she thought she was a terrible person, but she is actually quite nice. She is easy to talk to and doesn't act all high and mighty just because she is a senior, she is kind and pretty. But that is exactly why Inami is bothered. Why did she kiss Riku even though Minas is going out with Tak? Why would she do something that could ruin the relationship between all three of them? Suddenly, Riku bursts out of his room shirtless and in his boxers. Inami freaks out and screams out loud why he is walking around naked. At school, she tells Takt about it and cries about how it traumatized her and Tak laughs playfully. Ruki defends himself that it doesn't matter what he wears in his own home and that he already paid for Inami's meal as an apology. Minasi questions whether he actually did that and he says he did so. Minas starts to question him for her meal, saying that if they see him naked, he will treat them to a meal every day Minas sticks close to Riku and asks Inami to come together next time too. Tak sees Minase's lingering hand on Riku's back and stops in his tracks. Riku looks back at him while confused as to why he stopped walking. Takt excuses himself, telling them he has to go somewhere now because he has some things to do. Minas looks back at him and Riku questions her. She says she has something to do as well and goes with Takt. Riku gets surprised as he makes eye contact with Minas as she turns around. Riku starts to panic, saying that he has never felt this way before as he clutches his hand to his chest. Being aware of the fact that Minas and Takt are dating, but even then, it hurts him. Minas turns around to go with Takt, but Riku wants her to stay. He keeps on calling out to her in his head, but she doesn't turn around. Someone calls his name loudly and he comes back to reality. His mother asks him where his mind is because he is spilling his food on his uniform. His mother brings a rag to clean the spilled food, calling Riku a clumsy guy. She tells him to take off his trousers so she can wash them, but Riku says he can do it himself. His mother gets angry and questions him, saying that yesterday he was bumping his head into everything while walking and stumbling on the stairs. He has been acting weird this whole time. She tells him to go wash his face. His dad shows up in the bathroom and hands him baking soda while Riku is washing his pants. His dad sits down next to him to help him out and questions whether he is acting this way because of a woman. Surprise! Riku asks him what he means by that. His dad says that the only thing that men ever seriously worry about is women or food. His dad questions whether it is Minas, but Riku says it's not like that because Minas is Tak's girlfriend. His dad stands up and gives him love advice as a gift he gives Riku a little something, telling him to use it wisely. When Riku walks into the class, Minas greets him with a good morning. He replies back to her and others question him why he is in his gym clothes. He explains that he actually spilled soup on his uniform, so that is why he is wearing his gym clothes. Class starts and the teacher announces that for the sports festival, the anchors for three-legged race will be Minas and Riku. They both decide to practice after school because Riku feels anxious about it. After school, they practice on the ground. As they are breathless, Minas asks Riku whether he is taking it seriously and asks him to grab her waist properly. They try doing the race. As they practice, he keeps looking at her and they trip. They decide to take a break and Riku tells her thanks for staying behind to help and that he is so Sorry about it as well. Mine says that it's moments like these that bring back her old memories. She gets up saying that she is cold, asks Riku for a jacket, but he says he only has his shirt. She asks him to put it on her, but he tells her to put it on herself. As she puts it on, she says it smells like her favorite scent. Riku's heart skips a beat when he sees her in his shirt, and he quickly runs off, saying that he is going to go buy a drink for them. Minase stares at the sky, and she feels something in the shirt's pockets, and she pulls out the thing his dad has gifted him this morning. She questions to herself whether it is Riku's. As she pulls it out of Riku's shirt pocket, she questions whether he has it to use it with Inami. Riku leans against the railing with drink in his hand and sighs. Minas shows up next to him. He questions what she is doing here. She tells him that he shouldn't leave girls alone alone in the ground. Riku says that they should go back now. Minase holds up her hand and says that he has to drop her off home. Suddenly, it starts pouring rain and Minas blames Riku for taking too long. They make it to home where they are both drenched. Minas talks about how all of her clothes are wet and Riku turns to 
leave, but Minas pulls him back and tells him to come inside, otherwise he will catch a cold again at this rate. Riku questions his life in the shower, thinking how he was only practicing for the sports festival, but now he is in Minase's bath. He thinks about how he should hurry up and get out quickly before something happens. Minas calls out from outside and says that she is leaving his change of clothes outside the door and questions whether he knows where the shampoo is. When he can't find the shampoo, she suddenly comes in from behind and points to the shampoo bottle. Riku, baffled, just agrees and freaks out, tries to hide away. Manis tells him to stop shouting or the neighbors will hear. Riku questions why she is inside and she replies with how they always used to bath together, so it's not a big deal. Riku exclaims that they are not kids anymore, so she should get out. Minis tells him that thanks to him, she fell down multiple times and got injured today and was made to wait like an idiot and ended up getting soaked in the rain. And now he is telling her to get out. Speechless, Riku lets her stay and washes her back for her. While he suffers silently scrubbing her back, she sighs in relief because it feels good for her. Riku wears a blindfold as he washes her back, but because of this, his other senses are heightened. Finally, over with this misery, he says he's done with washing her, but she turns around and asks whether he wants to wash the front as well. Riku gets up and runs out while panicking. Outside, Riku steps on the fallen thing from his pocket, thinking it was Minase's. Soon after, Minase comes out and tell him to dry his hair because it still looks wet. Riku pulls Minae's towards himself with an angry expression as Minae's what's wrong? But Riku pulls her into a hug. She questions why he is suddenly acting like this. He says that he saw it on the floor, but Minae's tries to tell him that it is not hers, but Riku says he doesn't care who it belongs to. It just means that he has someone else to use it with. It's not fun for him when she teases him like that, and he just wanted to be like they were before. Minasi pulls him into a kiss and talks about how she doesn't want things to stay same as before because she wants to be with Riku. When Minas tells Riku that she wants her first time to be with him. Riku grabs her hands on his shoulders and tells her that she does not have to do that and that she is probably just messing with him. She questions if he would believe her if she put her words into actions, telling him that she is really serious about this and that she is not messing with him. And Minis leans in to kiss Riku as he pushes towards the back. Riku tries to push Minis away. Minas asks if he believes her now, that she understands that what she is doing does not make any sense. She is aware of these facts herself. Riku asks her to explain things to her if that is the case, because he wishes to understand as well, but Mina says that she cannot explain right now, because it's not the right time. Riku exasperatedly asks Minae's what she means by that, but she just apologizes to him in response. Minas touches his face with one hand and says that she is sorry because it is unfair to him, but she would never lie to him. So what she said earlier was true. If Riku wants to be with her anytime, she is ready. She opens up the door and walks away and lies down on the couch and says that she is ready even right now. She turns the other way, waiting for Riku to make a move. Riku walks up to her and stands behind her. He reaches his hand forward to grab something, but Minase closes her eyes expectantly. She hears a noise and opens eyes to see that Riku is going out of the house with his keys in his hands that he just picked up. Riku says that Takt is also important to him, even though it's too late for him to say this now. He tells her that he will wait until she tells him everything and that he will leave the keys in the mailbox. He says goodnight to Minae's and goes out and shuts the door. Minas lies silently on the couch, looking at ceiling, tears well up in her eyes as she thinks about how she is a bad person, but because Riku is a kind person, if she tells him, then he would surely, three days before the sports festival, sitting together, Inami exclaims to Riku that it is too hot outside. Inami says that she feels like she is going to turn into a boiled octopus and asks Riku to do something about the hot weather. Riku says that it cannot be helped. If they leave, then the tent ropes won't be secure. And if only they had an electric fan, then it would not be so bad. Omimi gets an idea in her head and tells Riku that she has a brilliant idea. Riku exclaims in a sigh of relief that it feels so cool and refreshing and Inami agree as she fans him. She asks Riku to fan her now and says that it is great if they do it like one person fans with the binder and other secures the tent ropes. Riku asks if that would slow down the work, but she tells him that it is fine because they're working hard. So even if they do it normally, it will be too hot to make any progress. 
They do rock, paper, scissors to decide who is going to fan the other next. They both draw a scissors even if they try five times more. Inami asks Riku if she likes him that much that they are having a tie five times. Riku says that it must be opposite that she likes him more instead. They do it again and they both yell out scissors, but Riku has a rock in his hands. Inami tells him not to force a tie and that he is cheating and demands a redo. Riku ends up losing and fans Inami but only until they finish setting up the tent. Inami grins happily as she says that she likes this side of her senpai more. Riku says that he does not like Umimi's cunning side and she says that he is being mean. Inami asks Riku if things are going smoothly with meanness, asking him that he hasn't forgotten that he has to make Minus fall for him. Riku looks away as he agrees half-heartedly. Inami says that she knows Riku is a coward so he probably hasn't done anything, but Riku cuts her off and says that he is doing it. Surprised, Inami questions him, and Riku replies with the fact that he is making progress so she shouldn't worry about it. Surprised, Inami asks him to tell what they did while she trembles over the thought. She jokingly asks him to explain, but Riku, while looking away, says that it is not really important, but Inami quickly stands up and says that it's not true. There is no way that it is not important. Ruki questions her behavior. Inami quickly tries to explain, but her head starts to go blank. She realizes that she does not want to say these things. Inami staggers and falls on top of Riku as she seems to have fainted. In the infirmary, Inami lies on one of the beds as the nurse tells Riku that she seems to have a heat stroke and that she will recover after a while. But right now, the infirmary is going to close soon. A family member should come to pick her would be good. The nurse asks Riku to call someone in her family to pick her up and she leaves to get permission to stay at school for longer. She asks Riku to take care of Inami for her. Riku thinks how he can't wake her up to ask her parents' contact number. He remembers that he has her mother's phone number, which he got back in high school, because Inami did not have her own smartphone back then. He gets up to go out and call her mom, but gets pulled back by a tired-looking Inami that is holding his shirt. Surprised that she is awake, he asks whether he woke her up because he was being too loud. But Inami asks him to stop and not to call her. She says that there is not one at home right now, so he should take her home instead. Inami asks Riku to take her home, but he refuses. After seeing her desperate expressions, he sighs and agrees and tells her to wait because he needs to pick up something. The scene cuts off to Riku carrying Inami on his back as he climbs the stairs. With a coy expression, Inami asks him if she feels heavy and that she is a little smelly because of her sweating earlier. But Riku tells her that it is fine, it does not bother him. His dad taught him to always say that they are not heavy in situations like these. Inami picks up on his teasing and says that she really is heavy then. Riku bursts into laughter. Riku tells her that speaking loudly will make her fever worse and her head hurt more, while Inami wonders whose fault it is if not Riku's. She tells him to stop teasing her. If she collapses at home, then no one will be there to help her. Riku questions that her mom should be able to help her. Inami hesitantly tells him that she ran away from home in middle school when she used to move houses a lot. It was because her mother got remarried. The only reason she came here was because they had no money and they were supposed to live with her grandma because they had no money. But then her mom tells her that she is getting remarried and told her to come along with her. She asks Riku whether he thinks his mother is selfish, but she says that she is also to be blamed for going along with it. She hoped things would change, but none of it did. They only got worse. Inside the house, Ruki puts her down on her bed and she thanks him and welcomes him into her home. Although it's her grandma's home, right now she is in the hospital, so she has the place to herself for now. Riku asks if she is always alone here by herself. Inami says recently she has been staying alone and apologizes that she cannot serve him some tea. Riku tells her to consider her condition. Rather than asking him for tea, he should be the one doing favors and taking care of her. He asks her to tell him anything to do to help. She tells him to pick a set of fresh clothes for her. As he looks at the assortment of stuff in her closet, she tells him to hurry up. Riku get flabbergasted and gives her new clothes to change into on the bed. She takes off her shorts and tells him not to look her way. With his eyes closed, Riku says that he should just leave the room, but Inami tells him that it is fine. He does not have to leave the room because she trusts him. She takes off her shirt and underwear and deviously tells him that he can look now. Taking a peek behind him, he sees her and freaks out. 
He exclaims that he thought she said it was okay to turn around and questions whether she is an exhibitionist. Inami quickly says no and hands him a towel, saying that she is all sweaty and that she wants him to wipe it off because she cannot reach her back herself and it feels disgusting and gross for her to be drenched in sweat. Riku thinks about how small her back is, running away from home with such a small body and living alone every day. Life must be hard for her. Suddenly, Inami asks him whether or not he is going to ask her the reason she ran away from home. Surprised seeing her trembling back, he says that he won't. He will listen to her as much as she wants when she has reason to talk about it. Inami smiles happily and puts her shirt back on. Riku says that he is going to leave now and that she should rest. She thanks him once again for helping her today, but as he is about to leave, she holds his hand and stops him. She tells him that she wants him to stay a while longer, just until she falls asleep. Ruki sighs and says that he will only stay until she falls asleep. Ruki comes back to the present after waking as he hears a loud shriek coming from another room, which sounds like someone telling to stop. He hurries to open the room door and sees Omimi in the hands of a stranger man as she tells the man to stop. Riku hears Omimi yell, stop. He thinks of going to help her right away. As he is getting up, he hears her call out the man as her father. He gets surprised to hear that the strange man is her father. Back in middle school, he didn't not meet this person. Umimi's father calls her out for being rude to him because he came all the way to the house because he was worried about her. Umimi looks scared and freaked out as she tries to say that it was because of him that she had to run away. Riku tries to think of something to do. If he goes out to fight him, he might get knocked out and the man will do something to Umimi. He finally thinks of something and pulls out his phone. Umimi's father speaks again as he talks about how absurd she is being. He has given her everything, be it money or a place to belong. He should deserve something a little in return as he holds onto Umimi's shoulders. She has a scared look on her face and she slaps him across the face. Her father angrily tells her that she needs punishment as he raises his hand to slap her. But Riku takes the hit for her instead. Her father asks whether he is Umimi's boyfriend but he tells him that he is just a senpai from school. Her father says not to poke his nose in family business, but Riku tells him that what happens to Omimi matters to him because she is his most precious kuhai. Her father says that he will punish Riku first because of his uselessness and raises a punch to Riku's face. Umimi yells out for him to stop and asks her father to not hurt Riku, but her father says that he will deal with him first. The voice sounds in the room from Riku's mobile in his pocket that says they have seen the father somewhere before. The person on call asks Riku to bring the camera closer to the man. Suddenly, Riku's mom remembers who Umimi's father is. She tells them that he is from Board of Education. His father smirks and asks what that information is going to do for them. Riku says that his mother recorded everything, from the part where he hit Riku and the part where he touched Yumaimi. If he does not want to see these clips and be released into the public, he should not involve himself with Umimi ever again. If he does bother her again, then he won't hesitate to release them to the public. Her father looks defeated and leaves the house angrily, slamming the door shut. Immediately, Umimi runs to his side with tears as she apologizes because all of this happened because of her. Riku laughs in relief as he says that it is all right. She probably went through more than him. Besides, his legs gave out and he feels so uncool right now. Umimi says that he is not right and to her he looked super cool. To her, he was the best. Happy, he smiles peacefully and thanks her. He plans to spend the night with Yumimi and says that he is going to rest for a bit because all the tiredness is hitting him all at once after all the relief. He wakes up to shuffling and heavy breathing. He sees Umimi laying behind him, getting off to him. Riku is at a loss for words when he finds Umimi being mischievous laying just behind him. He thinks about just pretending to be asleep, but as he closes his eyes and hears Umimi call out his name countless times, he snaps open his eyes and wonders why she is calling his name and remembers that she calls talked her senpai too, so it must be him. He smiles in relief thinking that makes sense. But Umimi calls out his name for real this time and he is ever so surprised and in shock as he realizes her feelings. He still does not make any sound as he guesses that she must have a lot to vent out today. So maybe that is why she could not help it. He feels Umimi behind her looking over him as she asks him whether or not he is awake right now. Upon hearing 
hearing no response, she questions that he must be asleep right now, right? She apologizes and holds his hand. She feels conscious about it because he is supposed to be like her Oni Chan, but she is doing something so shameful with him. In the morning as they eat breakfast, Umimi brings up the topic of last night and Riku flinches physically. She questions his weird reaction, asking him what is wrong. He says it is nothing and she talks about her father and the reason she ran away from home. She thinks she should tell him about it now. She tells him that two years ago, he was not like that at first. When she entered high school, it all started. Especially when she started paying more attention to the way she looks, he started to get close to her more and more. Riku questions her whether she told her mom about this. She says she did not because he acts like a good husband in front of her mother, and she couldn't bear to shatter that happy look on her mother's face, so she just tried to endure it. But she had gotten to the point where just one man coming near her body would make her shiver. She felt she couldn't endure it anymore, so she ran away to her grandma's house where she she lives now. Even though convincing her mom was hard, she managed to stay with her grandma. Riku says that she must still be scared of men. She agrees and says that later she met him again. Inami trembles as he tries to ring the doorbell. She figures that she cannot because she is scared. She decides to leave but figures that she should at least see his face before she leaves. She tries to get in through the back and searches for his room. She sees a door open to a room and sees Rik laying down. She goes up to the door of his room and squats down in front of him. When she sees him, she realizes that her hands are not shaking. She wonders if she would be fine if she touches him. But one and a half hour later, she is still trembling when she tries to touch him. She figures she cannot do it because she is so nervous and her legs are giving and she can't take it anymore. Riku wakes up confused while she falls on top of him. She realizes that she is not shaking at all. She says that he was too late to recognize her. She gets happy at the fact that she can touch him without any problem. She gets too excited and starts to spew out weird things that she does not want to say out loud. Riku tells her that she is heavy, so she should get off of him. She gets angry. That's what he says after they meet for the first time in a while. Back to the present, Imami talks about how back then it was him who saved him even though he must have not even noticed that he was doing it. Thanks to him, he was able to hold on to hope that things would stay like that forever. Riku asks her whether she is still scared of men, and she replies that she is still scared of others except for him. He asks her why she did not tell him this before. She thinks about how the reason she is not afraid of him is because she did not want to lie to him anymore. She deleted the picture of him and Mines from her phone, and when he questions her, she replies with that it all started because of her. At that time, when she saw Mines and Riku kissing, she got scared that she should lose him, and she felt like she had to hold on to him. Riku finally realizes the reason why she behaved like that. She apologizes and talks about how she was being absurd back then, but now everything is in reset. Their odd relationship of a good senpai and foolish kuhai ends at that moment. She asks for a last favor from him, and it is to ask him to go out with her. Tak yawns and Minas asks him if he is okay because he seems tired even though today is the main event. Tak tells her that he could not sleep much last night because he was looking forward to the even so much, ironically. Tak sees Riku and Ainamai together and calls them over. Inami follows Riku from behind as she holds his arm. Minaz notices the closeness between the two but does not say anything about it. Tak talks about how rare it is to see the two together, and Riku explains that they met on the way. Minasi gets a call on her mobile phone and excuses herself to attend the call. She talks over the phone doing something once it is done. After the call ends, she looks at the sky with a solemn expression and thinks about how it is her last Last sports festival. The announcement rings through the speakers that says that the three-legged race is the next event. Minas leans over the water fountain to drink water as all the competitors are advised to arrive at entrance gates five minutes in advance. Riku calls out to Minas and tells her that it is now time to go, but Minas looks away angrily and leaves him dumbfounded. She tells him to call her using her name, Shizuku. If he does not call her by her name, she won't move. Riku sighs and holds her hands as he calls her Shizuku to come on. As they sit and tie their legs together along with other competitors, Minase tells him not to move his legs so much. 
Finally speaking up, she looks at him and asks him why he is pulling away. He tells her that he probably reeks of sweat, so that is why. Miss acknowledges that he must have participated in various competitions since the morning. He tells her that he entered the same ones as Tak because he kept dragging him around. Even though he lost all the previous ones, he wants to win this one to get revenge on Tak. Changing the topic, Minas asks him if he and Umimi are going out now. Surprised by the sudden question, Riku bursts into a fit of cough as he asks her how she found out. She says that she just had a feeling and congratulates him. Feeling awkward, he thanks her, thinking that telling her was easier than he expected. Suddenly, he feels her tightening the rope around their legs a little too hard. Yelping in pain, he asks her what she was doing, and she replies with that she was feeling a bit annoyed so she is squeezing his ankle. He gives her an explanation about how he ended up dating Umimi. Riku tells her that someone has to be close to her, especially after what happened to her. She asked him to go out with him just until she can get comfortable around men again. It is strictly for a limited time only. Minase hums understandingly. She asks whether it was okay to share this story with her. Riku tells her that she allowed him to share the story with Minase and talked only. Minis asks him another question. She asks why it is only a pretend relationship. Riku explains that it is because Umimi likes Tak. Muttering to herself, she says that she wouldn't be sure of that. She asks another question now, asking him what he would have done if Umimi was serious. Surprised, Riku tries to answer but says that he knows she has feelings for Tak, so he would never be able to really think about it, thinking that might actually like him but in a totally different way. The announcement calls for the last runners to come to the front and Riku tells her to come on, but when Minas does not walk with her, he looks back at her questioningly. Minas hesitantly asks for a reward. He starts arguing with her that he does not benefit at all from this. Minas tells him that if they get first place, he will grant her request, and if they don't win first first place, then she will not involve herself with him anymore. Riku's eyes widen as she gets into position and turns to him to tell him to give is best as the race is about to start. When the race ends, Riku lies on the ground and out of breath. Minas looks over him and tells him that she wants to go on a trip somewhere far away as a reward, 